Hey guys, this is National Master Kem Yang back at it with another video. This time we will be talking about a game that I played in a simul last Friday. So 5 to 7, always welcome. Anyone can stop by. So let's get into the game. Um, this game was a French defense. So I was black. Our opponent was 23 dragons. So... Our opponent played e4, I played e6, d4, d5. Typical French defense, setting up this solid structure. You take back, I take back, right? And then if pawn up, then let's say pawn push, or get the knight out this way, maybe push f6 later. But those are the ideas. So after e5, I played a sideline. I played knight e7. Now, first of all, this is not one of those beginner moves, right? You would, nobody would ever think to just get out there and block this guy, right? First of all, somebody might think, why am I blocking this person? Well, um, I could also go here but I do not want to ruin my pawn structure because my goal is to go here, to this square, right? I want to be able to focus down the center a little bit and maybe play c5 later, put some pressure here. So something like that. Knight e7, knight f3, now I play c5. And now bishop b5 check happens. Now. The only thing I would say about bishop b5 is that it sort of gives me a tempo. And what I mean by that is that by checking me, I can bring my bishop out, right? While if you brought your bishop out this way, well, then I wouldn't be attacking anything if I was bringing out this way. So I would not bring it out. But because you checked me, now I can bring it out with tempo knowing that I have a threat. Right? And if you go back, well, I basically get an extra move to come here or something. So just a minor thing, you know, bishop b5 might have allowed me to come out one more move, but very minor. It's fine. Bishop d7. Bishop takes. Knight takes. c3. Knight f5. So I'm following with my plan. Putting some pressure here. Now, at this moment, it sort of feels like my knight should belong here instead of here. Right? So maybe earlier, when I'm looking at my setup, maybe taking with the queen was also decent. And in fact, it might be an okay move as well. Because now that I think about it, queen takes, getting the knight here, and getting the knight here, well, that probably is a little bit better than the knight being here. But very minor. Castles, bishop e7. So as I told you, I'm bringing out everything, right? Getting ready to castle, getting my rook over, something like that. Knight bd2, and here I was thinking, mm, do I want to play a really boring game? Castles, rook here, b6, really boring, maybe an f6 later. And I said, no, let's play b6 first, right? I want to see what my opponent wants to do, right? So I thought about it like this. If I castle, takes takes, white brings the knight out, then maybe it might be a little bit dry, because then, let's say, for example, castles, pawn takes, knight takes, knight b3, right, and I play queen c7, maybe something like knight d4, and immediately I'm already thinking, you know what, this is looking really dead even. So I thought, let's mix it up. 
So I played b6, ensuring that after it takes, I would take with a pawn and control this square, right? So after a4, completely fine move, I decided to go for it. I was like, I'm going to go for something crazy, see how my opponent reacts. Now, this is actually not a very natural move, right? I was just about to castle, but now I'm just charging at you. And so, this is sort of a theme in the Karakhan sometimes. Some people play knight e1, but here you can't because I'm threatening this, right? So, it's kind of hard to decide here. But I played g5. Um, I feel like knight b3 should work. Keep your distance on this guy after g4. Knight e1. h5. Maybe I have some space here, but after something like queen e2, bishop f4, knight c2, knight e3, white should be fine. This attack is perfectly harmless. It was a psychological scare, I guess. There's nothing scary about a g4 attack. So I was kind of happy when I saw h3 on the board. I played h5 and now g4. Here I thought very interesting defense because my opponent knows that if knight goes back, I can take right away, take, and knight takes, and I get this pawn, and I might get this pawn as well, right? So, g4 happened. Um, I mean, I probably would have went with knight b3 again, but apparently the computer likes our chess club members move. So, I guess it's good then. g4 takes, takes, knight h6. Now, here I was thinking about knight h4, and we were discussing during the game what happens if knight takes, rook takes, and let's say king g2, with the idea of bringing the rook over. Well, then I considered knight f8, the reason being knight g6, and going to f4, going to h4, I don't know. But I considered it, and I thought, mm, I don't know. And then, so let's say, for example, knight f8, rook h1, knight g6. Surely, if white just takes, right? White can just play king g1, next move with knight f3. And this attack is sort of gone, although... The computer suggests a really good move. King d7, followed by maybe queen h8, queen h7, rook h8. But I didn't see that far. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to simplify like that. I'm going to play knight h6. Keep the pressure on this pawn. Knight h2, f6. Why not open it up a little bit, right? When there's an attack ongoing. Although I'm, I'm, I'm trying to create a line, right? I'm trying to create a line to the knight. So by doing this, well, trying to get my opponent to take, maybe get the bishop over here, and try to position myself for the attack. So knight df3 comes in, and I say, okay, not a bad move at all, right? Because... You have to figure out, okay, I have to defend this pawn still, but I also don't want to take. So knight df3, perfect move. f takes e5, well, f takes e5 or knight f7, both are fine. Just keeping the pressure on the central pawn. Rook e1, queen c7, putting more pressure again, queen e2, and here I thought, okay, I really want to go all in on this guy. So I castled b4. Now here I thought about the move a5. 
The reason being is that after b takes a5, queen a6 check. And with the idea of this pawn right here being weak and being able to capture this pawn with the rook, well, that's plenty for white's attack. So instead, I would have to play something like c4, right? Limit the range that the queen can come. So after a takes, maybe queen takes, um, bishop e3, bishop c5, and something like bishop d4. Completely double-edged. I would have no way of taking this here. I'd probably just double up and look for an attack here, but really complicated, so I wouldn't know. I would probably start the attack with a5 next time, just because there's this queen a6. Because when our chess club member played b4, I basically, you know, I thought to myself, I probably don't want to take, it looks a little greedy, because our member suggested take, take, bishop takes, right? And here I thought, okay, may, this pawn is hanging, but I have a lot of pressure on the central pawn. So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, so I guess this is part one. I will re release a part two. So thank you for watching and please tune in for part two.